It's been about two weeks since I last posted a video onto YouTube, but I can't explain why I haven't uploaded recently. After playing a total of 59 games on my channel, and with exams coming up in like one or two weeks, and with no time to relax, or catch my breath from doing all of those things, I am completely stressed out. I'm just tired. I have no rest. And I have this one class that is driving me insane. No, really, it's politics. I hate it. A lot. But with that all said, Dragon Quest XI will be postponed as of right now because I need because that game is very long and I'm pretty sure I'm not even at a quarter of the game's completion or ending. But but I will tell you this. No, I can't lie to you guys. I haven't been working on the. Season 4 intro to my channel. But I can show you off the games that I'm planning to do on my channel. No. After finishing this game. One game is The Legend of Zelda. Try, try Like Princess. You know. A game that I kind of canceled. Around 2 or 3 years ago. Well I'm going to start over again. From scratch. Another game is J Stars Victory Versus. Well, plus. I don't know why they add the plus on it because it's basically the original J Stars. And I also show the intro on. I show some clips on my intro for season three. I'm gonna play that in the next season. Next up is Yokai Watch 3. I wanted to play 2, but there's like 3 different versions. And I thought that one of them, like the third one, third version of the game, would have all the Yokai, but apparently it's still like, you know like Pokemon Gold and Silver, how like they all have different Pokemon? The third one has the most Yokai, but not all of them. You can't get all of them in the third game. I mean, third version of the second game. So I am just decided to skip that game for now. And go to Yokai Watch 3. Yeah. Next game is Fossil Fighters. The first one on the Nintendo DS. I like it when I was a kid. I keep on breaking every bones. Cry every time. But I never gave up. And there was like the sequel, Falsified Champions, and I liked that as a kid. Not as much as Foss the first one, but I still like it. Then I tried the third one on the Nintendo DS, or the Nintendo 3DS. I sold it after five hours. I did not like it one bit. And also, what's kind of surprised about this series is that it doesn't have a lot of games, but it has trophies from trophies from the game for Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo 3DS, and it even has spirits for this series or franchise for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. I just find it weird that. It still haven't got a stage or assist trophy or even a character or boss for that franchise. It just I just find that weird. After that, I was going to plan on planning Jack 3. You know, the third and... Well, not the third game of the franchise. And kind of consider the final last good Jack game. Normally, I would play this by myself, but have you seen the other boss fights or final bosses in the game? I kind of needed 
my brother and my best friend to be with me because I was scared. Not scared of the first boss, no. The second boss, I had no idea what I was doing. And I didn't want to rage quit. Alone. And because COVID started, I couldn't invite anyone over, so... Which you still shouldn't. Well, until, you know, either the vaccine is down, your friend or the person you're fighting is wearing a mask, and the fact that you're sure that they got tested and they, and that person's fine. But anyways, I'm not gonna play this until, you know, COVID's calmed down a bit. And the last game I'm going, I'm planning on playing is, um, Gal Gun. Okay, that one I can't explain because that is, uh, I could describe this. It's a Japanese game. No, no, it's in Japanese, but you know how, like, Americans have cartoons and while Japan has anime? It's basically that. And the, and the weird thing is, um, don't judge me. I could not play games like Jack and Dexter, Ratchet and Clank, or Lost Shun games if I haven't played this game at all. And I was not planning on playing this, putting this game on my channel. But here's the thing, around one year ago, I made a bet against my friends that they can't beat me in Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games on the arcade. If I win, they have to play a game of my choice. And that game I chose was, what was it again? Oh yeah, Digimon All-Star Rumble. And y'all know how that turned out. But if that, if that person win, or my friend win, I have to play Gal Gun. And I unfortunately I lost. So I'm playing that game on my channel, but not yet. Not until I finish this game. Not until I finish season three, which I don't know when it's going to be over. But with that all said, let's start the video, the actual video. Okay. Do anyone remember the game PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale? For the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita. It was kind of like a... I can't call it a rip-off of Super Smash Brothers since the concept and gameplay is kind of similar, but the concept is not the same. As you, instead of knocking people out of the stage, you actually have to heal quote-unquote kill your opponent with different style of final smashes. I like the game. I really do. But it was not really made by Sony. It was actually made by another company called Superbox Entertainment. Superbox? Superbox Entertainment. And if you look on Wikipedia to see what other games it made, or this company made, you'd be very, very shocked as, um, well, how can I put this? PlayStation All-Stars is its only first and last game that they ever made. And here's why. If I can remember correctly, 
PlayStation All-Stars was technically the first Super Smash Bros. clone or style gameplay with actual DLC characters. And believe me, if I can remember, even picking out the roster was hard because Sony was like, yes to some characters, yes to no characters, some characters. Which is kind of why we have two coals in the game. But I remember the first DLC was a big success. But the second one didn't really sell well. And I believe that it did not sell well was mainly because of one simple thing. Anyone who buys a physical copy of God of War Ascension, they get the second DLC characters for free. And so if there's some and there are also some people out there who will buy the game, steal the code, and just return it. Yeah, there's a lot of people like that in the world. And because of that, because the sales of the second DLC did not go well, Sony decided that, okay, we're done with PlayStation All-Stars. We're definitely, definitely done. Even though... Superbot, Superbot Entertainment has other plans for the game. Well, DLC. We have proof that uh, the third F Overtime characters was going to be Dart, Dart Field, no, Dart Field, Dart F E L D, Field, no, Field, Dart Field. From Legend of the Dragoon, and A from Oddworld, uh, A from Oddworld, which, by the way, I don't know how to play that game. I tried it, died on the first level, tried going back, got eaten alive. It's a very dark game. Very, very dark game. And the stage that will come along with Overtime 3 was supposed to be a crossover with Journey and Gravity Rush. It was a game I tried playing, and I was good until there was like this one chapter that just scares me. Ugh, still does. But anyways, because they, st but the moment when they start making DLC, people are starting to dislike the game. Which is not really a good reason why you should dislike a game. Like, when they first came, the game came out, PlayStation was popular. And then when they stopped, they just dis disliking a lot of things. The moment when they stopped releasing DLC. And because of that, Sony decided to split up with Superbot and went their separate way. So, in short, I'm saying that I think, I'm not saying that's true, I'm not saying it's bi it kind of biased, but I'm starting to think Sony kind of ruined that company big time. It just, I just feel sad that the coming that did one game, the the Sony just said no, and it just ruined that company. To be just in my opinion, I just believe that they ruined Sony ruined Superbot Entertainment, and if they're ever going to be a PlayStation All Stars 2, the same producer who made the first game can't do it again because they all got fired and the company is bankrupt. 
But if they ever may decide to make a PlayStation Battle Royale 2, PlayStation 5, they have the technology and is a good celebration to show how far PlayStation come from all these years ago. So, I'm just saying, PlayStation 5, make PlayStation 5. Please give us PlayStation All Stars 2 on the PlayStation 5. Doesn't have to be soon. Doesn't have to be. I'm just saying, please make it the game eventually. I don't even care what system is for. It's ever it's on the phone, don't make it on the phone. But all of that said, it's not for me begging about a sequel. This video is a sh is my idea video of what characters I want from PlayStation All Stars Battle Royale to appear in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate or sequel future games for the series. I'm not going to include third party characters since they have a better chance of being in the game than the PlayStation rep first party representatives. And Banjo and Minecraft kinda got in because they had a Nintendo game or their own Nintendo cost console. But this is just my idea of my favorite characters. So um if you see my watch my videos on my channel you know which characters I'm gonna choose. But with that said, let's begin. Well, number one in this list is going to be like from oldest to new. So, if I have to say who's the oldest character out of all the places in all stars, I would have to say that the oldest has to be Rapper the Rapper. Or Parappa Rapper. No, Parappa Rapper kind of sounds like a first and last name. But since we haven't heard it in like the actual games, I'm going to call him Parap the Rapper. Now, his latest appearance was PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. And I wouldn't call a remaster a new game. Especially since like on the actual game cover, it doesn't say Parap the Rapper remaster, just Parap the Rapper. And... I'll tell you a little bit about him since he doesn't really come up a lot. But Rapper the Rapper has two and a half games. For Rapper 1, for Rapper the Rapper 2, and Unjammy Lammy. I think that was the game called. I say half because he appears in the game. He's a playable character, but he's not the main star of that game. Also, he has an anime. I've got to tell you that. In the place in All-Stars Battle Royale, Parappa and his rival Spike is all the only characters that actually have an anime. It's a nice little anime. Only came out in Japan though, but a nice one indeed. But something that you guys don't realize that in uh, articles talking about interviews about placing all stars, he say that they say that Parappar is actually the hardest character, and I mean the hardest character to make in the game, mainly because he doesn't have any fighting moves at all. Death Princess also a character that was hard to make in the game, but unlike Parappa, she actually has like subjects and other things in her game that actually does violence. So they have to make Parappa movesets based off his games and the anime, which is kind of reason why he has a skateboard. Like we see him have a skateboard and some of his artwork. But we don't actually see Parappa actually use the skateboard in the game. Or his main game. But 
for that said, let's go to like what Parappa, oh, what Parappa idea things he would get for if he was, you know, a DLC character to Smash. As you can see, his, his, you know, stage would be the dojo from Parappa the Rapper 1. All the move, the stage from dojo called from places and all stores. But apparently, the dojo actually has a name as it's called Fruity's Show Dojo. I don't know why it's called Fruity's, but it's not. Well, it doesn't sound right to me, but it's Fruity's Dojo. Unlike the one, it will kind of be kind of like the one placing at All Stars, but at the same time, it's not. There's not going to be like any crossover characters in it. It'll be kind of like place, kind of like how it worked in the first phase of Dojo, or you know. It's kind of like the first gimmick in placing All Star stage, the dojo, where like you can't really get trapped in this area. I would say the only the only way you can knock someone out is by hitting the wall in fearings. You know, until you hit him enough time that eventually the dojo will collapse, kind of like how. The Doja collapse when like that crossover giant robot thing start attacking in places in all stores. It'll be like that. But over time the wall will come the wall and scene will come back together. But in the meantime, that's your only big chance for you to, you know, score some KOs. And as for his music. I would do, I mix it up like some from Rapper the Rapper and some from PlayStation All, not PlayStation All Stars, Rapper the Rapper 2. And I did two remixes and I did the original stage, the first stage from the first game. I was gonna do Chop Chop Mass and Onion's second or oh, third song from Parappa the Rapper 2, but that one doesn't seem like a smash stage or music. And as for the spirits, mm -hmm. I did all his friends, PJ Berry, Catty Cat, Sunny Funny, Lammy from, from the spinoff game. Uh, Sean also appeared from the second, oh, from the spinoff and the appear in the first, not the second game, or last game. He doesn't really make that much, he doesn't really talk that much, I can tell you that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have included a stage that don't add Chop Chop Master Onion as a spirit. Colonel Noodle, the main antagonist from the second game. And MC King Kong Mushroom, the, the final teacher in the last game, and in the first game. Ah, now for the hardest part of doing the rapper rapper, making his move set or special move set. Okay, some of the names of the actual moves from Blitz and All Star sound uh, It didn't sound very good, some of them. Not all of it, but some, mainly for Parappa. So I decided to, you know, change the new moves. For his special, or uh, neutral special, I decided to get him. I forgot what his move. I think the move set or the move that actually was called Whack, but it didn't sound good, so I decided to call it Skateboard Whack. Well, you know, you pull out his skateboard and just hit the, his opponents. 
he doesn't usually have a skateboard, but in his game, but in the anime, he does. And also, I know people are expecting, like, the skateboard will be his, like, down or neutral special, but I think it should be, the skateboard should be used as his neutral special because I found out from watching the trailer that his, that move can also deflect projectiles. You know, like a fireball and a fireball, arrows, gunshots, he can deflect all of them with his skateboard. And for his side B, or side special, the move I remember is called I'm a Fan. Yeah, it's called I'm a Fan. But it doesn't sound right to me. So, I changed to mic run. Well, you know, like he swing his microphone and I charge the opponents. I would say it's powerful, but it wouldn't like, but it's, you know, actually you don't know. It's powerful, but it doesn't go a good distance. And after a skateboard rack, it's good to, you know, I'll say it's a perfect move to launch opponents, but not good if you want to deal damage. And Mike Run, it has to be close. You know, because Parappa is not a good melee, not long distance fighter. He's like close, calm, oh, close up fighter. Kind of like a brawler. Actually, he kind of is a brawler. And his up B special is level one special. Romantic karate. Where you don't really get it unless you play the Grab the Rapper 2 is like based off of the show Rapper Watch in the game, Romantic Karate, which by the way, he can't really do that kind of move in his game. Well, remains karate, but not like a flip back flick kick that can shoot out like a small aura. No, he doesn't have that in his game. And his down B is boxy groove where you pull out boxy boy. And unlike this version, it'll be, it was do just the same as he did in places in all stars, but instead of Instead of let or like powering up your super, you will actually heal Parappa and um foes if he if anyone's near Boxy Boy. As for his final smash, it's the same thing as level three, except for I changed the name to Doom Doom Box to I got to believe and um. He can trap opponents. Like he can literally trap at least one opponent as he starts rapping. And he plays that little, he was saying the same thing as placing in All Stars. And he doesn't like immediately kill everyone. But I do say that that damage cards, if he's like, if you trap someone and he's like at 100% damage, it will kill. If you fall away from the blast, which, you know, after the rap is done singing, a big blast will come, killing everyone and placing the all-stars. I would say the closer you are to the rapper, the higher the damage you will receive. And if you already at 100%, It'll kill you. Just like most of the other PlayStation All Star, oh, most of the other final smashes in the game. Okay. And as for his grab, I did include that. But as for his grab, you would be like, get over, uh, get over here. That's actually a move in the game for the rapper. Oh, come here. Where you like swing a microphone at opponents to make them to make them close to the rapper, 
that would be a grab as he like uses his microphone to grab people. Yeah. And I would say you probably can use that to grab onto ledges, maybe. But actually, yeah, that'd be actually a good thing to use for Parappa like here, especially you used his grab and grabbed onto ledges. It's kind of useful since you know, you know, since he's not doesn't really have a good recovery move. My man karate is not that good uh, for recovery. I'm just saying. Okay, number two on my list is also a PlayStation classic. And he appeared in the first game and some other spin offs. Which may or may not be canon to the actual series. And he's also in places in All Stars Battle Royale. And that character is. Bike from Ape Escape. As you can see, I used the uh, this picture for Spike because uh, the other images didn't really. Let's just say Window Movie Maker is not that good at all when it comes to using images with no background. But anyways, Spike has appearance had changed over. From this game and the new game. And, um, if you don't know who Spike is, Spike is the first playable character in Ape Escape. He seems like he was supposed to be the main character of the second game. Where he's, well, he is, but yes, he's not. But, like, I'll explain later, but he appears in one game. He playable in one game, not so playable, secretly playable in the second game, and the third game, not playable in the fourth game, and appear and the playable in a bunch of spin-offs, some that was in America and some, and most of them not playable. Okay, only one spinoff made to J America. But I'll tell you about the three other games that Spike did not, well, he was playable and he's the main character, but then it made his way into America. The first game that did not appear in, um, America for the Ape Escape series was Ape Escape 2001. Was takes play was actually the second game in Ape Escape that takes place between Ape Escape 1 and Ape Escape 2. Where like, I believe the professor was forced to watch all of the monkey's pants before sending them back to the zoo. And um, if he doesn't then the professor would be in big trouble, and Spike was kind of forced to do it. And there is kind of a big reason why this game did not make its way to America. Instead of catching monkeys in this game, you have to collect the monkey's um pants, per se. And by force, kind of like rape, and um, wash the underwear. It was a weird mechanic, and I kind of wanted to play it, just to see how hard it is, because I do know that if you beat the full game, you get, you unlock like a bonus level, which is basically like hard mode, instead of, I believe you only get one chance, and you can only get one hit before it's game over. I want to see that, but... I don't know how the monkeys look when they're, you know, naked, so I believe that's why this game then made its way to America. Now, the this game, Ape Escape Million Monkeys, is basically the design Spike look in this game. It's funny enough, 
was supposed to be in Europe, and Europe actually has like English voice actors. Well, they say the names differently from the Americans, but it still basically explained the plot. Luckily, people actually translate the game into America, well, to English. But in this game, Spike and Spike and his friends have to face off something different, a much bigger threat: aliens. So yeah, that's that's right, aliens. What are they call? I have no idea. All I know is that in this game, not only will you have to face off monkeys, but aliens. And it takes place sometime after Pump and Prime, the party game that actually made its way to America, where you can play as not only Spike. But Natalie, Cassie, the professor, Jake and Helga was like only playable in multiplayer. And you can also play as Spectre and the Monkeys, as for once, they're not really the bad guys, as Spectre was actually on vacation until they heard an alien attack. And he, he like used weapons that haven't appeared in the main games before. Mostly for combat rise. And the last game is that then made its way to Amer America was Ape Escape Saru Big Mission. Okay, is is there's like more there's like more, you know, Ape Escape games that didn't make its way to America or Europe. But this is one of those games that most of those games are the games that actually made its way to like an actual console. Well, they also made it, the other games made their way on console, but one of the games that actually involves the main characters. In this game, Vector shrunk the whole lab, and now Natalie and Spike, who are trapped in the lab, has to control the lab from the inside. Okay, maybe I phrased that wrong. I meant while Spike and Natalie was in the lab, Spectre had used a shrink machine to shrink the lab into a very, very sm small size. And not only that, he kidnapped the main, he kidnapped Jimmy, the man. The main professor and the main characters of Ape Escape 3. I don't remember their names because I haven't played the game yet. Uh, lucky for Spike and Natalie, the lab was small enough to fit on top of Pico helmets, the monkey's Pico helmets. So they had to jack the helmets to use the monkeys to move around and to get to the goal. Yeah, there's no capturing this game, but it was unique. Very unique. Sometimes I miss it. I sometimes wish I learned Japanese. Now, as for Spike stage, there'll be the time station. Except for there'll be no walls. And you know how, like, in the phase. In the second phase of the crossover gimmick and places in All Stars, there's like a giant spider that spits it. In this version, there'll be no giant spider. However, he will bring the time stage and will accidentally bring stuff from the past and attack the players. Like a giant monkey, I mean, a giant, you know. Actually, you don't. A giant T-Rex that may attack players or a bunch of samurais. Maybe even flying monkeys and UFOs. You know, gimmicks or hazardous or obstacles that Spike had to face in Ape Escape that the time she would accidentally warp in and out to the present. 
don't think that'd be unique. As for the music, I include some from Ape Escape, the original, some from Ape Escape 2, some from Ape Escape 3, and one from, and one, yep, one from Ape Escape Pump and Prime, and one from Ape Escape Million Monkeys. And as for the spirits, I did Spectre, Natalie, the Professor, Jimmy Papachi, the main characters from Ape Escape 2. Uh, okay. This is basically Jimmy, uh, Spike's rival. Cassie, that little bush roll girl thing that tells you what you need. How many monkeys you need to collect in the first game? And P A U. Oh, that was their names are. Keith and Yumi, the main characters from Ape Escape Three. Okay, and now from the move set, which this one was a lot easier to make up than Parappas. I forgot to say, but as for the Ape Escape anime, it was about. It's kind of like a retelling of the last three Ape Escape games, or the first main three Ape Escape games, while including some some elements from Pump and Prime and the Million Monkeys. You should check it out if you have a chance. It's not as long as the rapper, but it's still it's still unique. But as for his, you know, fan of special, I chose the Monkey Radar. It's kind of act just like the one in, um, kind of act like the game how it was used in placing All Stars, but I changed it up a bit so that it looks like a Mr. Game and Watch Judgment. It would chew out monkeys. But each monkey will have a different attack based on how the monkey looks. It's random. Some is rare, while some is common. And as for his side B, is the dash shoot. As you know, I use the dash shoot to run faster and to charge into enemies. This version, if you charge it up, you'll move a lot faster. That way, it will not, you know, deal a lot of damage. If you charge it up, it will work basically about the same. But imagine if you're trying to, someone about to use a charge attack at you or a smash attack at you. If you charge this up, you can hit your opponent before they got a chance to hit you. Now, the Sky Flyer, in position of all stars, is like a special move or special gimmick that you don't really know about. The Sky Cop Flyer, if you hold B while jumping, it will pull it out in position of all stars. But in this, but in Smash Bros., I would use it as like his a special. Well, he pulls it out and fly. He can't really move around a lot because. It's mostly for going up, not moving around. And it does, this move does not let you deal damage. As it doesn't work like that in the game. Now, his down special is the B launcher. One of the gadgets that you use in the Million Monkeys. It's like, kind of like grenade launcher, but instead, you shoot out electrical energy. At monkeys, or actually, I don't know what you use that on. I can't tell it's monkeys or actual aliens. But what I do know is that if you use that as an opponent, it will stun them, allowing you to have a chance to use a smash attack or a move that will finish off your opponents off. And his final smash is 
the monkey net. At first, I was thinking maybe I can use the monkey net as his standard special, but no, I thought of something unique. In the anime, it's kind of explained what happens to the monkey. Every monkey that you capture. They would be sent into like this paradise room where the monkeys will sit back and relax. But I would say that in this version, anyone who got captured in the monkey net will be sent to the paradise room just like the monkeys. Kind of like a cinematic cutscene of cinematic final smash. And the monkeys will all look at whoever's spy capture and go, quote unquote, bananas on the enemy. Dealing a lot of damage before they get, you know, they, they come out of Spike's neck, of Spike's net flying very, very far. Have you ever seen what happens when you actually get attacked by a monkey? Want to know the difference between a monkey and a gorilla? Gorillas are slow, but they but they are very very strong. Monkeys are weaker than gorillas, but they move very very fast. And the monkeys in this game look like apes, tiny tiny apes. So, imagine it being a mix of both. And one more thing, I was going to use the flyer, the sky flyer, as like his special gimmick where he like pulls it out or holds the jump button to glide down. But they remove gliding from the game, or from the games. Because in Brawl Pit, and may not glide in Brawl, but they removed that because, uh, mostly because of Meta Knight. That's all I'm going to say. Now, before going to the next character, I just want to point out the monkeys, you know, the monkey radar. And what I tell you about the different monkeys. Like I said, told you guys before, in Ape Escape, every monkey has a different gimmick. And, and it's not going to be based off, it's not random. Well, pulling out the monkey is random, but the mon what the, how the monkey will spawn and attack you is going to be based on what pants they're wearing. And I'm using that as the monkey's radar, for the monkey's radar. The monkey with the yellow pants, the one that you normally see in every game, we we'll just do a standard headbutt. The monkeys with the red pants will have boxing glove and angry looking eyes. As he runs at you, rolling his fist at his foes. The one with the black pants has the sunglasses and a gun. So that one's a no brainer what he does. The one with the blue pants with the sneakers and the Shane will just run past the opponents. Kind of like how Fox do his side special to the opponents. It's kind of like that. And I send them to the air. Not launch it, just send them up in the air. The one with the light, the light blue pants, the one in the back that carrying, would do nothing because he's a scary cat. The one, the white monkey with the glasses will actually throw a bomb that does da a lot of damage. And, and the monkey and the green pants monkey that wears goggles, he'll actually fire homing missiles at opponents. Which, I can tell you this very quick. The yellow monkey is the most common. The green hair, the green pan is the rarest one. Because basically like the white monkey, 
but it will lock onto the opponents. And unless you seal, you will get, it will be a lot, it would like, be like a level 9, but instead it just doesn't automatically kill people. So, yeah. Let's move on to the third character. Now, the third character I choose is gonna be... Okay, this whole list is kind of biased because I know there's plenty of better characters for this roster. But I'm just doing the ones that I think are good. Well, good enough that I can create a moveset for them. And that in the, but the third character in this list is Jack and Daxter. Jack and Daxter, the Jack and Daxter series has a very, very interesting history with Naughty Dog. I'm not saying that they treat Jack and Daxter bad, but hear me out, hear me out. Every time a new PlayStation 5 series comes out, is be Naughty Dog focus on a different franchise or series. But Jack and Daxter, it was with the PlayStation 2. The PlayStation 2. They focused all their effort on the PlayStation 2. And then when the PlayStation 3 came out, it's just, it was gone. I mean, literally, it was just gone. You haven't heard anything from Jack and Daxter until PlayStation Moves Heroes. And then after that, it was PlayStation All-Stars. But then after that, when the last time you heard of it, other than the remasters port. But that said, but when you look at place in the original PlayStation, it wasn't Jack and Daxter. Crash Bandicoot, as it was alongside the rapper, the rapper as one of the first PlayStation icons, and one of the game, few games that helped PlayStation reach its popularity. But then after, a, after a few games, for some odd reason, Naughty Dog just sold the company to Universal, and then they made. Some, it was a rough start, it had some good games, and then it just disappeared. And then after Vegeta made some games, and then they created Crash 4, and they just say that most of these games are non-canon, just in a different timeline. After Naughty Dog sold Crash Bandicoot and stopped Jack and Dax making Jack and Dax, there was Uncharted, which had which did well they the series did a little bit better for that franchise as they stopped when the PlayStation 4 came out. They did one more game and one more spin-off before they just stopped making it. I don't know if they secretly making a, another game or, you know, just making a reboot. I know they're making a movie off of Uncharted, but you haven't heard anything after that. Which actually makes sense since Nathan Drake's story kind of ended in Uncharted 4. Okay. When they were done with that, they did the franchise for the PlayStation 4, which would be The Last of Us. Out of all the Naughty Dog games, this is the one game that I am not going to play. Not because I heard that the second game was, the storyline for the second game was terrible, terrible. Or the fact that they shifted from cartoony to medium cartoony to realistic to downright scary is the fact that this is mostly a shooter game and I am not good at shooters. Shooters. At all. Before I 
start about the spirit and stage of this character. Let me talk about Daxter very quick. As this was one of the first, well, main spinoff games that didn't involve Jack at all. Well, there was also Dax and Daxter in the Lost Frontier, where, like, Daxter get his, gets a new transformation, but the thing is about the Lost Frontier and this spinoff is that, um, Daxter was during the time where everyone was actually focused on making this game, while on the Lost Frontier, it was not that good, not because they wasn't trying, it's because everyone was mainly focused on working on Uncharted, while only a little tiny bit of people work on The Lost Frontier. But Daxter is a game involving Daxter, what happened to Daxter during the two year time skip between Jack and Jack 2. Involved Daxter killing bugs and unintentionally saving the whole, saving the world. And kind of tiny spoiler, I don't know what happened, but I do remember seeing the ending. And this, and the moment after he defeats the final boss, the ending shows him going up some kind of elevator or something. And that is the scene where and that and right after that is where that's to say Jack. So if you're planning on skipping this game, if you go and play the Jack and Daxter's franchise, do not do do not skip this game. But play this game in my opinion, haven't played yet, but in my opinion, play this game after you beat Jack 2. And if you haven't played it, you can either buy PSP or PlayStation Portable and buy the game, or buy a PlayStation TV, which is a lot harder to find, and get it. But what I was trying to, but what, oh yeah, who you got? That because of this game right here, and the other game Daxter was in, Daxter, Daxter could become his own playable character. And I kind of have a move set for him. If I kind of have enough slots, but I only have six. So instead we're going to you do Jack and Daxter together, but I'm just saying, if this character making this match, that could be his own character too. Now for his, you know, stage, it would be San Dover Village. And that's all I need to say. Well, I could put it in a way. It's big enough, there's not any walls. The only thing you need to be afraid of is a fish, that giant fish shark thing. And it would be exactly like it does in PlayStation All Stars. Well instead of the Hot Shark Golf crossover, that will not be in it. But everything else will. The music would be a mixture of the stack one, two, and three. As for spirits they all come from one, two, and three. Like Kara, Akira, Samos, that Ashlyn, wait, that Ashlyn, Ash, Ash, I'm gonna call her Ash, Horn, Baron Praxton, the villain from the first, second game. Bigger, 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 and Pecker. I did not include the villain from the third game because I don't know who he or she is. And then include the main villain from the first game because I didn't have enough room. 
I really do not have enough room for that. Now, with that said, let's go to his moveset. Now, for his moveset, is basically simple. His moveset, their moveset, the standard is the Peacemaker. As they launch some dark ego, well, a little dark ego, at their opponents. It will be kind of like Fox Blaster, kind of like all the gun moves in the game. And it will do knockout, but you have to be, you know, it can't be, it'll be more, well, actually, yeah. It will be more effective if it's, your target is far away, it'll do a little bit more damage. But you can't do like back to back to back to back. As that'll be a little bit overpowered. So if you do it three times in a row, I would think it'll be just you have to wait before using it. You know how like guns or like machine can overheat? Guns will probably do that too. And his side B will be the jet board dash. As he can go on his hoverboard and move straight across. That would be, and I'll do, use that as a side B, mainly because of this, mainly because of special is a recovery move at all. It's like very, 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 very bad because it's not a recovery move. So it's good. The jet board dash is good for going great distance. And get like if you need to get onto a platform in time. That is a move that you should use. Because a special is the mass investor. I that gun is from Jack 3. Well, like, if you use it, it will send any opponent or object straight into the air for a short amount of time. However, don't think because it, it's like, if you're around it or near it, imagine if gravity, gravity just turned off just a tiny bit, but you can't move at all. That move is, well, it does do damage. It doesn't, like, send them flying across the room or does, like, maximum damage. It, like, send them up. But it is enough time for, like, De Jack and Dexter to, like, go up from below them and do a smash attack on them. But just remember, not a recovery move. If you try doing that, you can't really do that on yourself, unless you find yourself. In that case, it'd be good, but if you try and use that on yourself for, like, recovery, you can't do that. And the down B is a very, very powerful move. The Ray Consumer. I don't know how to say things. You know how, like, Red Eagle... Red Eco is a powerful Eco you used in the first Jack game. Now imagine you use that as a gun. And use all that potential strength and use it to aim it at the ground and just shoot. To call. Now for my fourth character for my PlayStation Pass, I would choose, well, you probably know the gift or jits of this. So, but I will say that I'm actually surprised he's getting a PlayStation 5 game. And I'm also more surprised that it's continuing from Into the Nexus. Okay, that was kind of a spoiler for the character. Ratchet and Clank. Another character, another group of characters that. They have enough moveset that Ratchet and Clank can be his own separate characters. But, 
No. Just, well, not until I actually see Ratchet and Clank being smashed, or they made a sequel to the place in all stores. And just like Jack, just like Jack and um, Daxter, Ratchet and Clank has enough games, well, more than enough games that if you have PlayStation, State PlayStation console, well, at least up to PlayStation 2, you at least heard of Ratchet and Clank. They even have a movie, which I have to say I enjoy it, but I don't actually remember it that much. And I do say that it was kind of a bad choice that they released a movie, right? During the time of the Zootopia. And also it's kind of a bad move to release a game based off the movie. Before or before the actual movie release. That actually killed a lot of potential for the Sly Cooper movie. That thing. And we still haven't heard that any news about the TV show. So. Yes that. Funny thing is, the same people who was making Sonic Boom was actually making the Sly Cooper TV show. That's it's kinda sad. Kinda sad I didn't get a chance to finish it. Now his now the stage will be Metropolis. There'll be still be the moving side rocks, the platforms, the Rather, the electric friends may summon, and still summoning crates and um, crates. Well, it will summon crates for like platforms, but also some like items, random items. Well, not like Bono Smash. Oh, not like Smash Balls or fake Smash Balls, or like Mr. Satan. Oh, I don't know what that moving. No sting hole. But be like something kind of like guns and um, shields. And maybe even a flag. But there will be no walls. No walls. No crossover gimmicks. Just perfectly like it is. Well, except for no walls and no crossovers. Now, as for the music. I believe I did one for each main, each game. Well, not every game. One for Ration and Clank, Up Your Arsenal, Going Commando. What else? I think Tools of Destruction. Tools of Destruction, okay. And there's also Crack in Time Into the Nessus and Ration and Clank 2006 and Ration's Deadlock, right? So let's go of Hate Music. And as for the spirits, I did Azmit from A Crack in Time, I still need to play that. Captain Crook and Nefarious. I really need those two spirits for those two characters as spirits. The plumber, as for some odd reason, the plumber appeared in almost every single game and comic. And a movie. Talwin, Talwin. The girl alien from, uh, Tools of Destruction. And Kronk and Zephyr. Those two old, old robots. Where's, spoiler alert. Well, it's not really a spoiler if it's past, like, 
a couple of years ago. It passed, let me tell you, if it's passed like five or four years after the movie or game or episode, then it shouldn't be a spoiler at this point as the series move on. They died. They died in into Nexus. And I'm still questioning and I would include that Lombax girl from a crack not a crack in time. Rip apart ripped apart. I would include that but her, but I don't know who she is. At all. I don't know who she is. And also, hey, we don't know who Dalton the Fairies is. He's the robot in one place or oh, want to destroy all organic life on the planet. And apparently, in Red the Park, he actually done it. Where Kling looked around and saw. Dr. Nefarious took over. He actually took over Organa. He already won. There's no Organa life, just robots. And he probably saw the female long box, a long box hand or arm where like half is organic, half is like robot. Don't know if she transformed into a robot or like kind of like robotization or she lost her on fighting. But we'll see her when, during season four, I'm playing, I'm definitely playing that game. Right after I finish Dragon Quest. Now for special moves. Is a little bit ordinary. Is Stand B is the Comet Strike. Well, you're thinking about Comet. No, it's not. It's basically the move that Ratchet used when he throw his army wrench as his opponent. The army wrench is basically what Ratchet used for his standard melee moves. When he uses it. Yeah, I was thinking about using that as like a attack, but it seemed like it was more appropriate for him to use his army wrench for like his standard moves, a uh, standard attack and smash attacks. But, and since this move can only be used while he stops, stop moving and just throws it, I think Jordan's Army Ranch is a perfect standard special move. Now, the Lightning R Rave Ranger, Raver Ranger, is a move that I can Thing he'll be used to like. He may seem like a whip move, but it's more like he's a move to block projectiles. Kind of like using it as kind of like a shield. While in the game, it does more. In fact, all of this weapon does a little bit more in the games, but this is Smash. And Smash is, you know, Break the rules of space and time a lot. So instead, he is in a lightning raver not only to attack foes, but use it as a kind of shield to block projectiles because in placing all stars, stars, the whip goes up instead of going horizontal. And now, the upbeat is the helipack. And I know what you guys are thinking. Well, some big hall fans are thinking, why don't you just use the jet? Well, why don't Crane just transform into the jet and fly up? The helipack won't work. Going up. Well, that is true. But, here's the thing. Do you remember Ratchet and Clank with the preparers or the jet? And, be and before you say the jet, 
I would say this. If you say jet, imagine just using a jet every single time. That'd be a little bit boring. Now the heli pack could be used to, you know, glide. You can go up just a little bit and just glide. Until you ask me to let go of the button. And he just falls. I'm just using the heli pack because, you know, it's more memorable and more ironic. Not ironic, um, nostalgia for Ratchet and Clank players. And the down B is Mr. Zolicon. As you summon Mr. Zolicon to battle, you actually attack any enemies that's n near him. But don't threat because, um, Mr. Zoicon can be destroyed. And also, every time you shoot at opponents, there's no knockback. So, don't think you just use him and send him to air. It's like, deals damage over time. But then, eventually, he will disappear over time or when he gets destroyed. And for his final smash, I chose the Rhino V. Because since the Rhino is... Wait, is it Rhino or Rhino? Okay, I got... I made a mistake on my spelling. It was the Rhino B. Now, rip ya a new one. That's what the Rhino stands for. And the place in All-Stars, it'll be his level 1 super. And he just pulls it out. And kill anyone that's in his way. It'll be kind of similar to this in Smash Brothers. Instead, we can also do it in the air. And the range is wider. But it's best to use it if the, the opponent goes up. So most of the missiles. Or ammo will be at the opponent straight on. Is that wider range? And then you would use that for like short and sweet, kind of like how we fit trainers find smashes, and like a in fact a lot of other fun smashes. Except for the closer you are, the more you're gonna get hit, and the farther away, the more you just have to dodge. And if you get behind Rashid when you use it, then you just won't get hit. It's kind of like one of those fine smashes that you have to get it. You got to get hit, get hit or get hit. You kind of like that scenario. Now, number five is, well, I'm not, you know what, I'm just going to skip it. Number five is basically a series that I talk about. When I was talking about Ratchet and Clank. And that character is Sly Cooper. Sly Cooper is a thief. More specifically, a master thief. Who may be, well, why he is wrong. What he's doing is wrong. Then mainly two, well, three things you need to know about Sly. One, in this game, the only time he is Steal is if it's something that belongs to his family, rescuing a friend, doing it for like a big crime scheme, or in this game, doing it to stop an evil villain, or, or just doing what needs to be done. Number two is that Sly only, the only if it's like Babel jewelry or like gold, Sly will only steal from other thieves. The only time you actually steal something from like a museum if Sly needs to, you know, do it to for operation or a heist. And number three, which is more importantly, just because Sly's a thief do not make him an anti hero. He's a thief, but 
he has a sense of justice. Like, if he saw someone robbing a bank, he would probably steal the money, but leave the kidnappers behind. For well, the police to arrest him. If he's like, see a kid crying because someone dropped a balloon, he will help the kid. If he saw an evil villain trying to take over the world or mess with time, you know he's going to stop that villain. Because even if he's a thief, does not make him a bad person. Just, it's like, how can I put this? It's like if you break out of jail and you saw someone trying to blow up the state, oh, the Statue of Liberty. You know what's right and what's wrong and you do the right thing. But that doesn't mean once you save the world does not make you change your ways. Because the Cooper family, Sly, is, that's how they make the money, steal from other thieves. Which reminds me of something. Remember Sly Cooper, Thieves in Time? The fourth game in the Sly Cooper franchise? You love it, or you hate it. For me, it's a mix of both. For one thing, I love it, because it contains off. It's kind of like the setup for like Toy Story 3 to Toy Story 4. The third game is a way for them to end the series. For the fourth game, it wasn't really needed, but it's still good. But why do I hate, hate this game? Well, other than the fact that this is the first ever Sly Cooper game I actually fi played and finished, there was one little thing. In the fourth game, this game, and you completed everything in the game, you get a small cutscene. That Sly is somehow trapped in ancient Europe. Which was, by the way, supposed to be set up for a DLC. Because, um, ancient Europe was supposed to be a l the f one of the first levels in these in time. But because the place in the Vita's memory capacity, they had to skip that and go to Japan. So they decided to set this up as a DLC, but because like this game didn't get enough sales, Sony said, no, you can't do this. Kind of like the same treatment as um, placing an All-Star. So as of right now, Sly is kind of trapped in ancient Europe. And here's the worst thing about this. The worst thing is that the developers even said that if they, if Sony want, the worst part about this game is that, well, the franchise that, the developers know that they Sly still trapped in Europe, and they want to finish it, so that way Sly can have a better conclusion. It's not like Mega Man Legend, when Mega Man stuck on the moon, he's stuck in Europe, and they, the developers, do not want that. They say, if Sony gives us the okay sign, we will make the big game right away. But, unfortunately, they still haven't. So, um, please, on the PlayStation 5, give us a game that finally, you know, sell our hearts or make us feel like Sly is actually going to be okay. Please. Now for the Sly stage, it's going to be Paris. Like I said before, no walls. The uh, platforms be kind of around the same level. Maybe I have a few more. But, other than the walls being removed, the only gimmick that I have for this stage will mainly be commonly a fox. You know about that tower on Impolation All Stars? The one from Infamous? 
Well, like we reach the stage, the top, and then cross over with the Sly Cooper franchise, and Carmelie will come out shooting people with her gun. Or taser gun. It'll be that. No crossover jazz at random parts of the game or battle. Conley will show up, come over, and shoot people with her taser gun. And then flies away. That'll be the only stage gimmick in the game. As for the movie, I mean music, there's only four. Well, two from every other four games. Sly Cooper Theories and the Theories Raccoonus. Sly 2 Band the Thieves. Sly 3 Honor Among Thieves. And Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. Wait, every of the, I just noticed that every game title has the word thieves in the game, or in the title. Hmm. Half of the spirits. I did mostly, mostly the characters from, how can I put it, from the original trilogy. So that way... Because it wouldn't be right to add the Thieves Rack, not, yeah, characters from the Thieves in Time in the game. Also, because some of the game, the characters from, okay, five of them. Wait, is it five? Japan, Texas, man. Yeah, five, the, five of the new characters are basically from, Days and time. Hmm, sorry, my bad. I've been doing this video, or making this video five hours straight. Most of these characters that list, oh, ah. Uh, most of these characters from the Days of Time either a one time villain or Sly's ancestors. Yeah, okay. Got it, I got it, I got it, okay. And most of the other villains in the games are a one time villain. Some of the final boss was the only one that actually had a big difference in Sly's life would be Clockwork. But other than that, the spirits are Bentley, Murphy, Connolly, or Fox, Clockwork, Panda King, Dimitri, the Guru, Penelope, and Nalia. Now for his movesets. The smoke bomb will be his, you know, stand the special. Where, like, he's not... He's mostly a sneaky fire, a tricky fire to master. The smoke bomb will be used to, you know, get out of a dangerous situation. If the smoke bomb hits anyone and slides in the smoke, it will make him invisible for just a tiny bit. Well, a tiny bit if he's outside the smoke. Wait, okay. If he used a smoke bomb and Sly went into the smoke, he make him invisible for just a tiny bit. Just a tiny bit because it doesn't make him. Because just using a smoke bomb did not cause damage, but just being stepping inside the smoke would make him invisible, kind of like a way for him to escape. And it won't wear off until just a, like three or four or five seconds when the smoke disappears. Now, long clock is just draw the long clock, which be his side feed special. Draw it, just draw the long clock to shock opponents. And, and if the opponents are near the long clock when they're long, you know, sets or turns off. 
they will be stunned. He or she will be stunned. But don't think that because you, you can just do it any time, the alarm clock is random. Sometime it could be just a normal three seconds, sometimes it could be one second. Sometimes it can even take ten seconds for the alarm to you know turn off. Now the up B, the paraglider, is a very, very unique of special. Because since how can I put it in a way? It's gonna act like peace par oh peace parasol as you just gently float down. However, so you can use it it can go horizontally faster than peace parasol, but there's only one tiny problem. It does not work on the ground at all. Because that's not how paragliders work. Like you can use it to move quickly across the stage if you're in the air, but it won't work on the ground since, you know it won't work on the ground. That's how paragliders work in real life. You have to be in the air for them to work. Now for the downbeat, the explosive barrel is a move that has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is Sly can jump into that barrel, go behind a person, kind of like, how can you put it, a ledge. Jump out and it will explode during a loss of damage. This is good. But there's only one tiny flaw. Let's say someone comes up and hits Sly. Cooper rides in the explosive barrel. The downside is that both it the when the barrel explode, both your know, the opponent and Sly will get exploded. Well it all depends how close if the foe is, but Sly will take the most damage since he's actually surrounded by TNT. As for the spawner smash will be the Binocucon. Well, it's like he would just jump off from the stage and take pictures, kind of like how it acts in, um, places in All Stars. The only difference is that when you take the picture of your foes, his foes, they don't kill, it just causes damage. And, um, yeah, that's basically it. Well, well, no, no, there's one thing. I was going, the paraglider move, the paraglider move, that's also the same gimmick as, like, the Ration and Clank Pelag Pack and Spike's Flycopter. Hold down A and Slide just floats down using the paraglider, but they don't have that in the game. But, Slide can crawl. Kind of like he does when he crawl underneath bands and tables, so... Well, I can crawl. I've got to say that. Now, now, let's go to the last character. Now, for the last character... Is mainly the first ever PlayStation character... I have ever played. Well, not really the first ever PlayStation franchise that... I played... On the PlayStation 3... Remember it, complete it, and did not get all the trophies because I did not have online when I was a kid. And that character is Sackboy. Sackboy is basically a kid boy thing made out of Sack. And the main franchise of Little Big Planet. And before I just go up over there, and talk about his spirit stage and special moveset. Just want to say one little thing. I will not include any characters, costume, or stages in Sackboy's A Big Adventure. Mainly because I have not played the game yet. Plan to, but I'm not, haven't played yet. 
So, if you don't mind, I would like, don't want any spoilers for the game. Please. Please. I know there's people out there who spoil the game. And, doesn't, it's like in high school when you plan to see the Avengers, but someone just spoiled the movie and just made your day bad. Now imagine just seeing like one thumbnail of the final boss. Or who the main feeling is. That would ruin your day too. So. Don't spoil this for me. Please. I just. Please just don't spoil this. Now. For Sack Boy stage. To be Dreamscape. It'll be kind of like how it is. And how it works in. Placing an all stars. With no walls. The level will build. As the battle keeps going on. Bridges. Platforms. Dangerous or poisonous waters. Or gas. He's like, what? May I gas? Or, but in rain ways. There'll be. It'll just build. Different every single time. So the same. Game it. Platform. Position will all be different. And there's no buzz crossover. And for his music, I did two from two songs from Little Bit Planet, Little Bit Planet Two, Little Bit Planet Three, and Little Bit Planet Carting. I have not played the Vita or the other game, so. As for the spirits, I did Sackbart, Odysseus, Targa, Swoop, Newton, Larry da, da Vinci, and the Negativitron. So mostly here from the second and third game. I there's there's a lot more characters in all the franchises I named, but is a DLC pack. Once that character's in it, and if that character return, you can add like more franchise characters, stages, whatever you want. But this is a DLC. You need to think small. Just small. As for Sackboy's specials, it was kind of actually a lot harder than for rapper because there was so many possibilities for Sackboy. But his neutral special is Jam Session, where you just throw a ball of jam as opponents. It does damage, but it's not really a move that for knockback. It's mostly a move to slow down opponents. Kind of like, kind of like how it works in Inkling's Ink Shots. The more ink they have, the more damage. Or the more damage they cause. Except for the more jam they have. The more they move slower. And not only that. But the jam will bounce around. So if you like hit a wall. It will hit the wall. Bounce off the wall. And go backwards before you know it disappears. Now the jetpack. Crow screw. That's like I work to place as an all star charge. Uh, the traver, the traver, traver, travel. My bad, travel. A greater distance and from all damage. Now the up special. I know a lot of people are gonna hate this, but I say it works. It's the checkpoint. The checkpoint will, you know, know how you like to try a level. And it will send Sackboy back to that location. The checkpoint is used so that way Sackboy can come go back to the exact location. However, and hear me out, you cannot place a checkpoint in mid-air. 
unless Sackboy's like on a platform and a, and the platform disappeared. You cannot place a platform mid air. Oh, wait. That's not how you word it, right? I got it. Sackboy cannot place a checkpoint in mid air if you like, if you stand on the ground. And the platform disappear. The flat checkpoint will still be in the ear, but he cannot do it in the ear. Number two, when you use a checkpoint, the checkpoint will disappear. It will disappear, and you have to set up a new one. And three, which is more important, enemies can destroy the checkpoint. However. It's more like, if you use it once, if it hasn't been destroyed at all throughout the whole match, then it will be a lot harder to destroy. But if Sackboy done it like once, it will be easier the second time, then the third time, then the fourth time. Meaning, the more you use the checkpoint, the more it's going to be easier to destroy because that will be a little bit overpowered if that's not. There. But at the same time, it's still overpowered. And I would kind of use jetpack. Yeah, I should. Hmm. Or maybe the checkpoint could be like a one time uh, special. Well, like once you did it once, you can't do it again until you lose a stock. That'd be nice. And the bounce pad bounce would be kind of like a shield to launch anything that comes near you. Like as opponent, they will launch up and it would like projectiles like a fireball or thunder jolt or electric jolt. It would actually go upwards. Go bounce upwards. Thing it's kind of like a counter, except you don't have to time it. And it doesn't really do that much damage. Now, his final smash would be kind of like a level 3, but the twist. In the prize bubble bonus, players, all the players would be turned to, you know, bubbles. And if that boy touch it, it will be destroyed. Oh, they will kill the opponent. But in this one, it won't be awake when Sackboy used the bow bonus. And every prize bow will have either a healing item or weapons that can be used for destruction. But it wouldn't be fair for Sackboy to be vulnerable, so he have like a 10 second Invincibility, that way you can kill anyone, heal any item without being worried about being killed. So, 10 seconds of invincibility, a few seconds of invincibility, and random items appearing from the ground. And that's it for the last character. Before I end this video off, let me show tell you about my honorable mentions. It's not because there's a reason why I didn't choose that specific character in this list. And I'm going to tell you why. So, here's all the honorable mentions right now. The first character is Kratos from the God of War series. Kratos is basically Xbox is PlayStation version of Master Chief. As that's kind of one of the reasons why PlayStation is getting all this money. Well, unlike Master Chief, Master Chief was there during the first Xbox console. While Kratos' first appearance was PlayStation 2. That now think about it, this only was about three, no wait, four or five 
original PlayStation 1 exclusive that actually appeared. But anyways, Matt Kratos is basically, and I quote, very, very strong. And he's kind of like an anti-hero, as like, he does bad things, but his bad things are justified because what he, what he did, and I won't spoil it. Well, technically, I will spoil it. The god accidentally tricked him into killing his family, and so he wants revenge on the gods. And there's like more games that take place during his past, but either way, he was mad. But there's there's this kind of reason why he's not in this game. Oh, uh, I wouldn't didn't choose him to be in Smash. Not because, not because what his action did, or what he, the action that he done. It's mostly because he's a this franchise is a little bit too violent, very very violent. I want to say more combat violent, but a lot violent. Maybe if you tone down the violence just a bit, maybe he will be in Smash. Next character is Nathan Drake. As I just always explained, it was owned by it's owned by Naughty Dog, and he's also a popular character in the PlayStation universe. But the reason why I did not choose him because. One, not because he's a normal guy, because he used guns. A little bit too many guns. And unlike Bayonetta, where she used magical bullets, and Joker, where his bullets are actually in, before you say anything, I learned from Brandon that Bayonetta's bullets are magical. And I learned from Cameron. Saying that his the guns he that that scared me the guns that he uses is basically toy guns and we and uh what the real looking worlds Joker guns become real to take on different personas or monsters. Freight guns are actually real, so. Imagine showing him getting shooting by Mario. Oh, him shooting Mario could be a po Pikachu. We're not going to have that. Not for until this Super Smash Bros. become an M-rated game. So, let's not put Nathan Drake at all. And the last character is Sir Daniel Fortescue. The main character of Medieval. He had two games and four remakes. One the PlayStation Vita, not PlayStation Vita, PlayStation Portable, and one for the PlayStation 4. And he's also one of the classic PlayStation characters from the PlayStation 1. And the uh, and the reason why they didn't include him as a playable character because while his skill set is very, very unique, he uses a sword. And apparently a lot, and I mean a lot of players did not want another sword fighter character. Which I do, do say that he is a sword. Most of his moveset is different and does not involve a sword. But I don't want to trigger anyone, so we're not going to add him. Well, at least not just yet. So this is the characters that showed for the PlayStation 5, I mean PlayStation All-Star Pass. Rapper the Rapper, Spike, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Sly Cooper, and Sackboy. 
maybe if Nintendo decides to do one of the, at least one of these characters could be represented for the PlayStation, then Joker is mostly Sony. I'm uh, saying, but Joker is mostly Sega. Well, at least one of these PlayStation characters should be in Smash, since, you know, turns out that Nintendo was kind of the reason why PlayStation was created. If you don't know, then ask, I'll tell you in another video. And thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any character that you think should be in Super Smash Brothers that was in place in all stores, just leave a comment below. But thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.